This video is brought to you by MUBI, a curated online cinema streaming exceptional films from around the globe. Get your first month for free at MUBI.com slash Royal Ocean. I'll get them away from here. You hide under the truck. I'd say one of the aircraft is missing. The first idea cooked up for the 1959 classic North by Northwest was this, a chase sequence set atop Mount Rushmore. What do we do? Climb down. We can't. Here they come, we have no choice. Alfred Hitchcock and screenwriter Ernest Lehman had been sitting around after scrapping another project that they were supposed to be working on for MGM when Hitch said that the scene was an action sequence he'd always wanted to put in one of his movies. Lehman latched onto the idea, a slew of ideas followed, and North by Northwest was pieced together by a method of jigsaw-style writing where the two worked backwards, first spitballing a number of big set pieces and visuals they wanted to see, and then devising a narrative that would connect each of those events together. In this case, the story of a Madison Avenue ad exec played by Cary Grant who's chased halfway across the US by a nefarious spy ring after being mistaken for a fictitious secret agent. And in the process, they inadvertently created the first James Bond film. Well, okay, not quite. There's a fun theory though that you may have heard of before that posits North by Northwest as a kind of prototype film for the Bond series, the early Sean Connery entries in particular, establishing elements that they would pick up and run with just a few years later. And it's not too difficult to see. If you were to watch North alongside any of them, it would feel pretty in step, a kind of sibling film, if you will, even beyond From Russia With Love's homage to the famous crop duster chase sequence. So many of the same plot ingredients can be found in both. Things like Cold War paranoia, unimportant MacGuffins, charming megalomaniacs accompanied by sinister henchmen, and an irresistibly sultry tete-a-tete -tete between the leads. It's not New Year yet. <laughs> But even before the Bond movies, Ian Fleming was essentially telling the same kind of story on paper that Hitchcock was telling on screen. They were complementary storytellers, really, trafficking in similar genre territories who imbued their narratives with a similar sense of speed. Critic and future 007 writer himself, Raymond Benson, has talked about the method Fleming used to end his chapters with a sense of urgency, something Benson dubbed the Fleming Sweep. The odds were on Bond's side, but now it was Le Chiffre who looked across into Bond's eyes and hardly glanced at the card as he flicked it face upwards on the table. It was, unnecessarily, the best. A four, giving the bank a count of nine. He had won, almost slowing up. Bond was beaten and cleaned out. An ending like this, one that's often smack dab in the middle of the action, hooks the reader and sweeps them immediately into the next chapter. It's a cliffhanger, more or less, that spurs the action forward. And if there's a cinematic equivalent of that kind of technique, then Alfred Hitchcock was surely a master of it. A movie like North by Northwest is really a film of individual episodes, a series of short stories strung together. Take this early one here at the United Nations. They climaxes in a trifecta of mistaken identity, murder, and Roger Thornhill being framed for a crime he didn't commit. Listen to me, I had nothing to do with this. And then ends almost as abruptly as the murder itself is committed. The audience, like Roger, hurled forward into the next chapter, cutting away almost immediately after the stakes have been raised. 
and Hitch does this a number of times throughout North by Northwest, building up individual sequences to climax and then sweeping us straight on through to the next chapter, often without necessarily showing the pieces in between, going so far even to make a joke out of the very formula within the film's final scene. Come on, I've got you. Up. I can't make it. Yes, you can. Come on. Blogger. Come along, Mrs. Thornhill. It's no wonder, really, that a friend of Ian Fleming's urged him to see North by Northwest when they were trying to bring the Bond films to the screen. The similarity of storytelling between the two made North an obvious guidebook as to how the plotline of one of the novels could be adapted for the screen, the way they could move and unfold. And not only that, perhaps more important was that North was just as much a model for how the Bond adaptations could look and feel. When they began putting the pieces of North by Northwest together, Ernest Lehman told Hitch, I said, I want to make the Hitchcock picture to end all Hitchcock pictures. And he said, what would that be? And I said, something that has wit, sophistication, glamour, action, and lots of changes of locale. And that's a formula you could as easily apply to the Bond films as you could to North. There's a lot of discussion you can find comparing the James Bond of the novels to the various on-screen incarnations we've seen over the years. But where Fleming's original character was modeled in part after singer Hoagie Carmichael, Sean Connery's Bond, I think you could argue, had far more in common with Cary Grant, who, incidentally, was also the very first actor offered the role when Dr. No was being prepped. Not that I mind a slight case of abduction now and then, but I have tickets for the theater this evening. It's the charisma, the charm that Grant possessed that we can see reflected in Bond. Maybe I should get you to take me there someday. I've tried everything else. Darling money, Penny. You know I never even look at another woman. Where 007 on paper leaned more towards a cold-hearted killer, the on-screen persona has generally leaned much jollier. I think he got the point. A suave, debonair, and stylish womanizer with a healthy sense of humor and a grab bag of sarcastic one-liners. One of my friend's sisters went out. She's just dead. In fact, North's overall suave tone, its glamorous atmosphere Ernest Lehman felt was a key element of a trademark Hitchcock film, was something that the Bond films really ran with. Its world of secret agents and espionage wasn't hard-boiled, but attractive and sexy. They were globe-trotting stories full of travel and resorts that had a particular emphasis on highlighting various unique cultures and on filling the screen with associated icons and landmarks. And you can see traces of that in North. It's not a globe-trotting film, but it has the vibe of one, almost like a travelogue bouncing across the country through vastly different landscapes, setting a solid amount of its action on trains or in hotels or airports, and of course setting its climax atop a world-famous monument. Oh, my wives divorced me. Why? Oh, I think they said I led too dull a life. <sighs> and through it all is a light-hearted, tongue-in-cheek tone, one that's sardonic without being cynical and so light and jokey that it's almost farcical. Stop! Oh, excuse me. Stop. Ah. Hitchcock went on record saying that North by Northwest was really just one big joke. A slice of cake if there ever was one to invoke one of his famous quotes. You gentlemen aren't really trying to kill my son, are you? Yet again, a sentiment that you could apply to the Bond films, who've had a well-worn history of often just diving headfirst into jokey, ridiculous waters. All of this, I think, makes for an interesting case study in the traces that a film can leave behind, the way that a particular film can influence the movies that succeed it, regardless of whether or not that influence was conscious. North by Northwest is the closest they will ever get to a proper marriage between Hitchcock and Bond, and setting the two next to one another is a pretty enlightening exercise, for both their similarities and for the ways that they're not so alike. I'll leave you with this. My name's Bond. 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 James Bond. My name is Thornhill. Roger Thornhill. There's never been anything else.
For as much as the Bond actors have shared in Cary Grant's charm, the comparison between the two characters only stretches so far. Bond is really closer to a superhero than he is anything else, and Roger Thornhill far more the everyman, thrust into a world of spies and in the process confused, manipulated, and even made a fool of. No, these two men, they poured a whole bottle of bourbon into me. No, they didn't give me a chaser. Furthermore, his being unknowingly seduced and manipulated by Eva Marie Saint's undercover secret agent looks, in retrospect, like a kind of role reversal as it relates to the Bond films. I've seen the suggestion floated around that North by Northwest is arguably a Bond movie seen from a Bond girl's perspective, with Roger Thornhill occupying a role a bit closer to, say, Honey Riders from Dr. No, that has him suddenly plunged into the middle of a spy story only to become the love interest of an undercover secret agent and help put a stop to a megalomaniac's evil plans. And of course, if true, then I guess that technically makes Cary Grant the first and original Bond girl. I wonder what he would have thought about that. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. This video is brought to you by the good folks at MUBI. If you don't know, MUBI is a curated streaming service showing exceptional films from around the globe. Every day they premiere a new film. From exciting work from up-and-coming directors, to timeless classics from master directors, to cult favorites you've never seen, there's always something new to discover, be it a slice of life or, as Hitchcock called many of his own films, a slice of cake. It's like your own personal film festival streaming anytime, anywhere. And every film comes lovingly handpicked and curated. And because of that, I've found that I wind up spending way less time browsing through endless titles and adding things to watch lists, and more time actually watching. It's a strategy that I think is really brilliant. And for me, it's resulted in the discovery of quite a few new gems, a number of which I'd never even heard of before. If you're interested in trying it out and getting an entire month of great cinema for free, you can go to movie.com slash royalocean to sign up today. 